can I just import the fundamental experiment that yeah. changed my life? Uh, okay. Uh, first of all, recognize I'm teaching in a medical school uh, a concept called genetic determinism, uh, which the public is still in, imbued with, but science has let that go, except the public is still caught in the belief of genetic determinism, and that is genes turn on and off and regulate the characteristics of your internal and external life experiences. Uh, and, and when teaching that back in those days, then what I was teaching, and I see it from a whole different perspective today, is victimization. In other words, you train medical students to understand that all these diseases are caused by genes going out of control and all that stuff, uh, and then they tell the patient, and then of course the patient goes like, oh my God, well, I, I didn't pick these genes, and I can't change the genes, and the genes are apparently controlling who I am. I, my God, I'm a victim of my heredity, uh, and I'm teaching that. Okay, but in the laboratory, I was working on stem cells. Now, you got to remember, this is uh, 50 years ago. Uh, there were only a handful of us in the world that even knew what the heck a stem cell was. That wasn't a big topic at that time. And I, had, uh, I was in the right place at the right time to uh, be cloning stem cells back uh, in 1967. Now, uh, just for those in the audience, very quickly, a stem cell is an embryonic cell. Uh, we change the name at the moment a person is born, <laughs> just before they're born, uh, the cell is, oh, that's an embryonic cell, and uh, <laughs> right after they're born, same cell is called stem cell. Uh, the significance is that uh, a human body is not a unity, it's a community of 50 trillion citizens, uh, sentient citizens called cells. I say the word Bruce, that, that, that is actually a word for a community. <laughs> Bruce is 50 trillion cells. Uh, and, and so the relevance about that is um, the cells have lifetimes to them. Some of them turn over very, very quickly. Uh, skin cells are continuously being sloughed. Uh, the, the entire lining of the digestive tract is replaced every three days. Hundreds and hundreds of billions of cells every three days, are you losing them? And it's like, well, how long can you live if you can't replace them? And the answer is not very long. So a very significant factor for everyone out there, if you're watching or listening to this, uh, you have stem cells because the function of stem cells is to keep the body intact as you're losing uh, billions, hundreds and hundreds of billions of cells every day. So a stem cell is an embryonic cell, can replace anything. Here, here's my scientific stuff. I isolate one stem cell and put it in a Petri dish all by itself. That's cloning. Uh, it divides every 10, 12 hours. So first one, two, four, eight, doubling, doubling, doubling. After a week, 30,000 cells in the Petri dish. Most important fact is they're all genetically identical because they came from the same parent. So I split the 30,000 cells into three Petri dishes. and um, what I did was change the composition of the culture medium. Sidebar, culture medium is the equivalent of blood. If I grow human cells, I look at the composition of human blood, try to duplicate that in a lab synthetically called culture medium. I grow mouse cells, I look at mouse blood. So culture medium is synonymous with blood. But I make three versions because I'm synthesizing it, and I slightly change some of the chemistry in each of the three versions. Uh, so I have three Petri dishes, genetically identical cells in all dishes, uh, but I feed them a slightly different version of growth medium, blood. <laughs> and in one dish, the cells form muscle. In the second dish, the cells form bone. In a third dish, the cells form fat cells. What controls the fate of the cells? Well, the first thing is this. They were all genetically identical. So I can't say one had different genes than the other or something was going on. It was environment interacting with the cells and the cells interacting with the environment that selected the genetic activity of the cells. So the genes did not make a decision as to what they should be. The genes responded to environmental signals as to what they sh should be activated or not. So first thing is this, any concept of the term a gene turned on and a gene turned off is 100% fallacious. A gene has no self-actualization. A gene cannot turn itself on and off. A gene has no knowledge of what it is. A gene is a blueprint, a linear molecular blueprint, no different than a blueprint in an architect's office. I say, why is it relevant? Because I say you go into the architect's office, she's working on a, a, a blueprint, and you say, is your blueprint on or off? And she look at you like, wait, you're crazy? It's a blueprint, there's no on and off. I go, precisely, a gene is a blueprint, has no on and off. Okay, 
what the studies revealed is that the information from the environment is uh, perceived and reacted to by controlling the genetics and behavior of the cell. Now, what's really interesting about this is um, when I first showed this to my colleagues, which is, you know, this was when the, the whole genetic industry was getting off the ground and everybody was like lemmings running toward that genetic gold mine somewhere. I'm the only guy standing on the side going, yeah, I don't, th I don't think it's the genes. Really. <laughs> I, I think we should be looking at the environment at this. But the genetic thing was, it was a vast movement. So uh, I just did my research. It repeated it all the time. And at some point I realized I, I can't teach medical students anymore that people are victims of genes because the recognition is that the environment and the perception of the environment by the cell determines the genetics and behavior. So if you say genes control life, you're telling people they're victims. If you tell them the environment and your perceptions control life, you're giving them an opportunity for mastery. Why? I can change the environment, I can change my perception, and therefore I can change my biology. I go precisely. To watch the full episode or to subscribe to the podcast, click the link in the description or visit us at neurohacker.com slash collective insights.